Hello, I'm JW, and uh, in this video, having a look at those fake 15 amp fuses again. Here they are on this uh, plastic tray, those sort of blue coloured jobs, which uh, say claim to be 15 amps, but in reality, probably are not. And I've got some 13 amp ones in there as well. The uh, 13 amp ones are a bit grubby because they've been in a dusty drawer for some time, but nevertheless, they are the proper 13 amp ones. So we'll put various currents through those and uh, compare the two devices, see if there's any important differences. And uh, before we go outside and do that, uh, here's a graph which uh, gives an indication of the time it takes for the fuse to fail at various currents. And you see there, I've put a line at the two times mark, that's a red line there. So for the 13 amp fuse, of course, that will represent a current of about 26 amps. And if it was in fact a 15 amp fuse, then a current of 30. So certainly in the sort of 26 to 30 range. And uh, the time it takes for the fuse to fail is actually between the two black lines. So. At the lower level, you see the black and red lines cross at around 0.2 seconds. So, of course, that's pretty much instant. And at the other extreme at the top there, it's actually over 100 seconds, so we're coming up for a couple of minutes. Now, unfortunately, this means that uh, putting current through these on a small number of fuses, they could actually fail at any point within that area, so between less than a second and a couple of minutes. So the time it takes for these to fail won't actually tell us a great deal as, of course, uh, some might fail there anyhow, so we won't be able to draw any real conclusions from that. But uh, we'll certainly uh, put the current through both of them anyway and see uh, what happens. Now here's the test setup, uh, pretty straightforward. The current is displayed on the clamp meter there, so I'm just uh, starting to turn that up. And the fuse is in that bottom half of a plug there. And I've actually linked the uh, line and neutral terminals there with that bit of blue wire. And the current therefore just goes in one and through the wire, through the fuse, and of course returns to the supply. Now, uh, just coming up on the current there to 13 amps. And of course, this fuse ought to be able to carry 13 amps pretty much forever. That's obviously that's what it's rated for. But uh, what we'll do now is just increase the current above 13 and keep going until it actually breaks and uh, see how far it actually goes. So just around the, well, 13.9 there, so obviously a bit of an overload already. And uh, let's see how far this actually gets to. Now that's 17, which is a fairly substantial amount of overload. But uh, of course the current uh, continues to increase. We're now passing 18. Now that's 20 amps. And at these actual plugs and sockets, uh, there is a test as part of the standard, which uh, does actually put 20 amps through them for a certain amount of time. And uh, we're going way beyond that now, so 23. over 25 amps now and uh, still holding there, 27, so we're now well over the uh, double of the rating, so into that sort of tripping or failing area, so 29, and very much it could take anything between a couple of seconds and several minutes, and just coming up to the 30 amps mark now. And there we have, the fuse has now failed. And as you saw, that took uh, several minutes to actually melt through, even though we're putting a current of more than double its actual rating through there. Now we saw there just a slow increase, but uh, this time what we're going to do is turn the current on at a fairly high level to start with. And for this test, we're going to start at around 25 amps. So in the case of the 13 amp fuse, that's almost double its intended rating. And as we saw on that graph initially, that's uh, well into the area where the fuse will fail at some point between a second and several minutes. And uh, what I've done here, I've got the top part there is a 13 amp fuse, and that is a proper one. Obviously, I just replaced that because the previous one was busted. And in the larger picture there, I've got the fake 15 amp fuse, 
And I've also added a temperature monitor there so we can see the temperature that the fuse actually gets to. It's fairly likely these are going to get quite hot, but of course that's how they actually fail. The uh, wire element inside uh, heats up and then melts through. And as before, of course, the current will be shown on the clamp meter. Now these were two recorded at different times, so uh, the currents won't be exactly level, but uh, nevertheless they will be uh, reasonably similar. So uh, let's start and see uh, what happens this time. So the current's on there, and you see it's around the sort of 26, 25 amps range. And you see the temperature's climbing rapidly already, already into the sort of 70 Celsius range, and uh, continuing to increase substantially. And so even the genuine fuse is now uh, well over 100 Celsius. Seems the fake 51 is slightly ahead on the temperature, but uh, not really a huge difference at this point. And currents again fairly similar, sort of 24.8 or 25 on the other one. Now, but anyway, this can take several minutes to fail, so uh, let's just uh, wait a while and see what happens. Now, notice on the larger picture there, there's actually what appears to be smoke coming out of the fuse. Now, that's uh, not supposed to be happening. and not entirely clear what's actually smoking there, because, uh, of course, it's made of metal and ceramic, neither of which should be giving off smoke. And uh, the smoke seems to be increasing. And if you look at the one at the top there, which is about the same sort of temperature, there's absolutely no smoke on that one at all. And it's not the actual uh, plastic plug either, though that may be softening a bit. It's certainly not... Uh, smoking and disintegrating, so whatever that is coming out of there is coming from the fuse itself and not anything else. Temperature is now coming up to the 300 Celsius range on the bottom one. The 13 amp genuine one seems to be a bit behind at about 270. Current around 24 amps for both. And notice the 15 amp fuse is actually discolouring at the top there and going sort of a charred blackened colour and the blue ink is uh, not blue anymore, it's also gone black. Well, the smoke's still pouring out of there, so uh, goodness knows what's happening inside that. And the uh, current is actually dropping off a bit. I had to adjust it because, of course, the uh, resistance of heating things uh, changes. So certainly the bottom one is now exceeding sort of 350 odd. The top one has actually failed now. And the fake 50 amp one is still going. And now that's just failed as well. So in terms of actual time to fail, they're pretty much the same there, but say we can't really draw any conclusions from that because, uh, as we saw on that graph, it could be uh, any time within that sort of area. So the fact they failed at the same time or any time uh, doesn't really tell us anything. And to confirm that point, uh, what we've got here is the similar setup. Again, this is the same current, 25 amps or so, and uh, different fuse, of course, but still the uh, fake 15 amp variety. And obviously we'll see how long it takes to fail this time. Now, that previous time uh, took well over two minutes to fail, and this time we'll start it going and see what happens. So current's on there, about 23 or 24 amps or so. Let's just turn that up a bit to get nearly 25. As before, temperature's increasing rapidly. So now coming up to uh, 90. Just past 100 Celsius there, and current's still about 25 amps. And then the fuse has suddenly just broken. So, of course, that time it only took around 30 seconds for the fuse to fail, even though the uh, actual parameters we used were exactly the same. So, just an example there of the inconsistency of these things, so, uh, so the time taken doesn't really confirm anything at all. Now, this time I've got the uh, two uh, setups there again, so the 13 amp at the top and the 15 amp one, or whatever rating it is, at the bottom. And the current this time will be around 30 amps, uh, 3.0, so uh, this is a considerable overload, well over double the rating of that 13 one, and around double the rating of that uh, 15 amp rating there can be believed. And again, we've got the current and temperature displayed. So uh, let's switch on and see what happens. So switching on the current there, and see it around the 30 amps mark straight away. And to the uh, lower fuse, the 15 amp one has already failed, even though the other one, of course, at the top is still going. So, again, that rather inconsistent in terms of how long these things actually take to fail. 
And here's the plug I was just using for the test there, and I see it's just got that link of uh, wire there. And this is pretty much undamaged. See, there's a bit of deforming on the plastic insulation of the wire there, and these contacts have discoloured somewhat. And if you just uh, look underneath, there is uh, some slight melting of the plastic surround there, because I suppose just to fit in there, so it has uh, deformed slightly. But then being at 300 uh, Celsius, you would expect that. But the smoke definitely came out of the fuse, because though this has deformed and gone slightly brown, that's uh, not burned or anything, and certainly the amount of smoke coming off, if that had come from the plug, of course you would have seen uh, a whole load of uh, blackening and damage there, which of course we're not seeing at all, and other than the contact being slightly discoloured, and say a very minor amount of melting there, then uh, this is pretty much uh, as it was when we started. Let's say the wire there is just say, slightly deformed at the end, but uh, other than that it's pretty much as it was. Obviously we won't be using this plug again because the heating and cooling of these would obviously weaken the springs a bit, although they seem reasonable, but uh, for the cost of a new plug I'll uh, just be disposing of this particular one and uh, not using it again. Now these are the fuses which obviously were blown in the experiment there, and these 15 amp ones here, you see the ink has gone black on the outside, let's compare that to one of the blue ones there. So it's totally changed colour, and that may have been part of the smoke coming out of it, although uh, the ink is still all on there, so it's not entirely clear that that's part of that. And if you have a look at this other one here, which has also gone black, see at the end caps here it's got these uh, indents where the uh, material is actually either melted or deformed somehow. And I said there's one on the other side as well, and although it was obviously clipped in a holder, uh, the uh, end cap shouldn't obviously deform like that, and uh, the other one hasn't at all, so there's definitely some kind of issue here, and there's also some black uh, charring or burning underneath the cap there as well. And again, on the other side, a similar situation. And compare that to the 13 amp ones, uh, they're a bit grubby because they've uh, been in a drawer for a long time, but the actual end cap has slightly discoloured, the metal itself has gone that sort of goldy tint rather than the original silver, but other than that, it's completely intact, and you wouldn't even know anything had been damaged there. And say, look at one or two of the others, which have also been heated up to that temperature. Then, again, there's no visible damage to the even the end caps of the same colour. So there's definitely some problem with these things, and quite what that smoke coming out of it was is uh, unclear. Gives the impression it's uh, some kind of uh, composite part of the metal, or uh, it looked like the sort of stuff you get from solder flux burning off, which. Definitely is not the sort of thing you'd expect to find in a fuse, because of course uh, solder melts at a fairly low temperature, and uh, of course the wire should be crimped onto the ends, not just uh, tacked or soldered in there like that. So there we go there, and as I saw at the beginning of the video, uh, the time for these to fail is quite inconsistent, so I don't think we can draw any conclusions from how long the various types took to actually fail. As I say on the graph initially, it could be between uh, just a fraction of a second or a couple of minutes. But in any event, there's definitely some uh, issues with these with smoke billowing out of them, going black and uh, end caps deforming. So uh, definitely not something you're going to want to be using. But until next time, thanks for watching.